Hey students, this is Pastor Jordan. I'm just thankful for the opportunity to talk with you real quick and give a little devotional idea. I wanted a couple announcements to make a couple announcements this morning uh, before we get into the devotion. First of all, DNOW 2020 will be postponed. Uh, we will keep your deposits and uh, we will give you information uh, as to when that will be in the future but I promise it will be a fun time. And so we will keep your deposits. If at any point we cancel, we will return those deposits to you. I also wanted to let you know that we will be doing our student worship at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday. So please tune in for that. I will send out an email as well for that. One thing that we're trying to do for our senior saints is to really encourage them. So I'm gonna send out an email with a bunch of addresses and some names from some of our senior saints here at East Memorial and just to uh, be able to send them letters and to encourage them in this time when they're in solitude and uh, just really don't have a lot of contact with people. I just wanna be able to encourage them as well with the truth. And so you'll be getting emails. Um, your parents will get emails about that. And so I just look forward to that opportunity. And uh, finally, we also have a prayer time at 3.30 p.m. on Thursday. So please stay tuned for those opportunities. I look forward to them. Wanted to, uh, open the word of God this morning. I want to share with you 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And he says, starting in verse five, on behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though if I sh should wish to boast, I would not be a fool for I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with my weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What an encouraging passage we read this morning uh, from the Apostle Paul. And I drew out five different application points that we can take away from this as believers in this time of difficulty. First one we see is that God uses suffering to reveal believers' spiritual condition. You see in verses five and six, we see that there's this, there's this problem that Paul has, okay? He's not wanting to boast. Um, he says that he would not be a fool if he were to boast of what God has done in and through him, giving him these revelations, but he refrains from it so that no one would think more of him than they ought. Um, he is he is saying here essentially that that the the truth of the gospel in him is powerful it's not what he brings to the table it's what the gospel brings and so he's saying that he's also saying that he wants to be humble in this and that the the spirit is using this as an opportunity for him to be humble look in verse 7 it says so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations. Again, we know that the Apostle Paul was stopped on the Damascus Road, struck with blindness, and called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so right here, he's saying that God is using this suffering, this difficulty in his life to keep him humble. God uses suffering to make believers humble. We learn that in verse seven, that he uses suffering to keep us from conceit. And so it's very important that we recognize that, that even in this time of difficulty of suffering, when people are dying, when people are losing their lives, when people are becoming very sick, that we realize that suffering has a purpose and it's used to humble us. It's used to humble us as Christians, as people who, you know, normally we don't have reason to boast, but yet we can sometimes have this air about us. We can become boastful in our thoughts and our thinking like I'm, I just have it all together, my life is going well. Well, sometimes God brings a trial into our lives in order to keep us from conceit. Thirdly, we see that God uses suffering to draw believers to himself. Look in verse eight, it says this, 
Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that they should, that it should leave me. See, Paul here is pleading with the Lord. He's pleading, he's saying, God, will you please let this messenger from Satan that's been sent to harass me, would you please rid me of this, this, this thorn in my flesh? And Paul gets an answer from God. He gets an answer and the answer is no. Paul, I will not remove this thorn in your flesh. I'm going to keep it in you to keep you humble and to draw you to myself. So, so God does that sometimes with us as well. You know, it's not every answer is a yes answer from God. But the truth about God's word and that we understand of prayer is that every response God gives us, whether it's yes or no or wait, is always a positive answer. Now we might not understand it positively at the moment, but God, as we understand, is working all things together for our good and for his glory. So even if we go through a great trial, a tribulation, and ask God to rid us of it, and he says no, God is using that ultimately for our good and his glory. And so every answer, whether it's no or wait, is a positive answer from God. So we understand that, that God uses suffering to draw believers to himself. Fourth, we understand that God uses suffering to display his grace, to display his grace. Look in verse nine, the beginning of verse nine. This is God's response. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. You see, God's grace is sufficient in each and every trial, in each and every difficulty, in each and every fear, in all anxiety. God's grace is sufficient for you. He's given you his grace at the cross of Jesus Christ where he died so that you could have eternal life. And so think about that, that grace that God enables us to have, gives to us freely, that compels us and then gives us the courage to see any difficulty, any trial, and face it fearlessly, knowing that God is in control and gives us what we need to make it through. So he gives us suffering to display his grace as he did with the Apostle Paul. And then finally, we see that God uses suffering to perfect his power, to perfect his power. Look at the end of verse nine, it says, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow, all those things that Paul's going through. You know, the story of Paul was one of shipwreck, of betrayal, of beatings and yet he's saying everything that he's been through all these things that made him weak are truly his strength because he's doing it for Christ his power is perfected in our weakness every time we fail every time we falter God's power is made great in us so what he's saying is that the power of God look in verse 9 at the end the power of Christ may rest upon me, may rest upon me. And so what he says in that, in that resting, that the power of God rests in us, is that we can be content in that. We can be content in that. Look in verse nine, for the sake of Christ, then I am content. I am content. And this is where I wanna end. You know, contentment in this time is something really that you need to fight for. It's something that I need to fight for because our social, our social uh, relationships are completely different. Our ability to come and gather and worship is completely changed. You know, you don't, you're not able to just go out with your friends. You're not able to shop. You're not able to go to the movies. And so it's really a fight for contentment. So I'd encourage you, I'd encourage you in this time, not to fret, not to fear, but find contentment, find that rest in Christ that he can give you. Re recognizing that everything, all these times of suffering reveal our spiritual condition. It does. It makes us humble before God. It draws us to himself in prayer and it displays both his grace and his power. We can be rest assured that God has a good plan for us, even in this time of difficulty. I love y'all. God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you'll join us as we continue to study these themes in scripture uh, Wednesday night at 530. 
and uh, as well as our prayer time Thursday at 3.30. God bless you. You have a great day.